you are welcome here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. It's so great to see you all here with all your smiling faces. And how about that chilly weather, huh? <laughs> Who was expecting that? Yeah. <laughs> Great. So also welcome to our Facebook friends that are watching the live stream and to those folks that will watch us later on YouTube. We just welcome all of you and just celebrate your presence here in our lives. I'm going to pass the word over to Lonnie, our board president. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so beautiful to see your faces here. You're such a blessing to us. And what a special day. I mean, we've got our beloved Gia here. Yay. <laughs> And of course, Chris, we got the regulars, Yay. Chris. <laughs> and I'm, I'm assuming Hugh's doing a reading. Oh, yes. He's yeah. right up front. <laughs> and let me see, am I missing anyone? Oh, Bonnie. Oh. <laughs> I heard you were going to do a talk today. I thought I might, but if, okay. you're, if you're up for it, you know. Just... Uh, no. Oh, OK. No, okay. <laughs> not going to. All right. Yeah, okay. they don't want to hear me. OK. So, so happy that you joined us, Facebook family. Settle in. It's going to be a great morning. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lonnie. Let us hear from Bill Hadris. Mr. Bill. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Bill Hadris with Youth and Family. So, who's ready to let go of the life you've planned and move forward with the life that's waiting for you? Ooh. I'll do it. Look at that. I was yeah. like thinking there was just going to be pinkies, but <laughs> we're getting a lot of hands yeah. out there. I love it. When you move away from what has been or blaze a new trail of spiritual awareness, you step into your greatness. To do this, you must be brave. Have the courage to overcome your fears. You've done this already. Think about it. Who's learned to talk? <laughs> Who's learned to walk? <laughs> so you've been brave and doing new things your whole life. You didn't have to do anything special. The feelings of courage were just there when you needed them. This divine presence is always within us. Ernest Holmes said, we all need more backbone and less wishbone. <laughs> there is something which waits only for our recognition to spring into being, bringing with it all the power in the universe. So what's the next thing you are going to share with the rest of us? With that, I'd like you to repeat after me. I am courageous. I am courageous. I am confident. I am confident. I am brave. I am brave. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Are we going to have the youngins come up? OK. A lot of mics now, now, we're not going to force you if you don't want to, but you're welcome. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, kiddo. Good to see you. Good job. All right, Everest. Good to see you. Hi. Hi. All righty then. Come on up, kiddo. You can come up here. And sit next to me. Okay, hi. There's a spot here if you want. How's this? Felix, hi. Good to see you. Hi. She's a new friend, yes, right. Okay, so here we go, everybody. <laughs> you are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart, you are a part of me, you are the face of God. Ah, 
yes, you are. Thank you so much. Have a great time in youth and family. <laughs> oh my goodness, was that the sweetest thing ever? <laughs> Big kudos to Susie and Bill and, and Devin and, uh, and Steve for all you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so now we're going to have a word of prayer from our beautiful practitioner, Lacey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Everyone stand, practitioners and trainees and ministers. Take a deep breath and take in this beautiful, glorious morning. And I know there's only one life, and that life is God's life. God's life is the life of all of us, everywhere, all the time, no matter what. There's no place God is not. And I know that today is going to be a beautiful day, full of love and good energy, wonderful weather, and <laughs> we can pray for that. Absolutely. <laughs> and just knowing that everything is unfolding exactly the way it's supposed to for all of us. We enjoy our friendship. We enjoy God's love and this beautiful center and all of us in it and outside of it. And with all that, I release my words into the universal law, knowing as I speak them, they are already so. And together we say, and, and so, so it is. It is. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Lacey. And so let us stay inwardly focused and just feel that expansiveness in our heart that comes from being in spiritual community with folks that want to love deeply and share that love with the world. We breathe into this beautiful energy and we open our hearts and our minds and our beings as we hear the words of our sacred reading. Small Kindnesses by Danusha Lamaris. I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded, uh, crowded aisle, people will pull in their legs to let you by or how strangers still say bless you when you sneeze, a leftover from the bubonic plague. <laughs> Don't die, they are saying. <laughs> and sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to do each other any harm. We want to be handed our cup of coffee hot and to say thank you to the person handing it to smile at them and for them to smile back, for the waitress to call us honey when she sets down the bowl of clam chowder, and for the driver in the red pickup to let us pass. <laughs> we have so little of each other now, so far from tribe and fire. Only these brief moments of exchange what if they are the true dwelling of the holy, these fleeting temples we make together when we say, here, have my seat. Go ahead, you first. I like your hat. <laughs> and so it is. And so it is, thank you. <laughs> So once again, we center ourselves, anchor in that sweet energy of giving and receiving that was so beautifully expressed in that poem. And we know that the divine is the eternal giver and receiver, that one that lives and moves and has its perfect being through us. Another name for God is I am, whether we call it higher power, divine, source, love, science, mystery, Whatever it is, it is that which expresses through us. It is that which knows that we exist. The I am that says, yes, I am. And so let us remember that I am presence for us, for ourselves as we sing together our chant. But also we know it for the entire cosmos. Everything is I am. The person sitting in front of you, the person behind you, to the left, to the right, this whole sanctuary and beyond the walls of the sanctuary, the entire cosmos is I am, singing a praise to I am. 
Let us sing together, I am remembering who I am. <clears throat> I am remembering who I am. I am remembering who I am. I am remembering. I am remembering who I am. I am joy. From the love of the I am presence within us, we anchor in this healing energy and we send it forth to heal and bless and prosper as we breathe in deeply and then exhale, opening our eyes as love and in service to what is as it is and so it is. Namaste. Thank you, Lita and Joan. silence between each drop of rain holds all the stillness of a beautiful refrain a pause with each breath brings new inspiration the ember that starts a flame in our heart from the fire of creation the sisters and brothers side by side cross this land walking together step by step hand in hand Ooh, the wonders we are endless variations from the ember that starts a flame in our heart from the fire of creation your smile
the fall, to the fall of creation. that seriously how do you do that <laughs> you know it's even well I don't know if that it's more fun than watching Gia but it's just as fun as watching Gia's husband Chris oh my god Chris can you just stand up and show us your face no <laughs> okay <laughs> just so sweet so sweet mm. well what a beautiful morning it is and what a beautiful morning it is to talk about service and joy this comes, this phrase, when service becomes joy, is a takeoff on this, um, on this quote from a, a, a Nobel Prize winner, Tagore, a poet and also a spiritual guy. And he said, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. Is there anybody here that finds joy in service? Just raise your hand. Yes. Okay. If you don't, we're going to convert you. Yeah. <laughs> going to bring out some of the hellfire and brimstone. I'll be smacking heads and people will be falling down in the aisles. Nope, sorry. Different church. Different church. Okay. <laughs> All righty. And the book that we're featuring this, this month is called How Can I Help? And it's by Ram Das and uh, Paul Gorman. And it's a, it's a really sweet book. I'm going to start with a story from this book. And I'm not sure who the... I don't think it's one of the authors, but there's this, this man in this story. We'll just call him the man, okay? And the man is out scuba diving. And he's, getting, he's, he's down below about 40 feet. And all of a sudden, he's in the middle of the ocean, far away from everything, and he gets this terrific, horrible cramp in his abdomen. And he tries to unbuckle his weight belt and let that go so that it can drop to the ground so he can rise to the surface, but he can't, he's so cramped over that he can't get in touch with his weight belt. He can't um, release the clasp on it. And then he tries to massage his abdomen muscles, and he can't do that either, again, because he's so cramped, he can't get to his muscles. And so he's saying to himself, this is not how I want to go. I don't want to die like this, where nobody knows where I am, and nobody, nobody will know what happened to me. This is, this is terrible. Then he feels a nudge from behind, and his first thought is, shark. <laughs> he hears the theme song from Jaws. Everybody, dun, 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 <laughs> right. That's all right. We'll, we'll work on it. Okay. <laughs> he hears the theme song from Jaws, but then he feels something trying to get him, uh, his body under him, get his arm around the, the fin, and he looks up, and he sees oh, a dolphin. A dolphin found him in the water, and the dolphin raised him up towards the surface and brought him back to the shore. He said he was worried that the dolphin was getting into water that was too shallow. So he's like, go dolphin, I'm okay from here. But the dolphin waited until the guy got to the shore. And then when he got to the shore, he was so excited that he took everything off, including his wetsuit, and he ran back to the dolphin and he said, let's play. And so the dolphin took him back out to the deeper water and they played together for a good 20, 30 minutes or so. And then when he was exhausted, the dolphin brought him back to the shore. <laughs> and let him go. And the dolphin made one sound and then swam off to be with his dolphin friends. Is that remarkable or what? What a remarkable being. How many of you here have swum with the dolphins? Oh, a lot of you, that's great. Yeah, I did, but it was just SeaWorld, so it wasn't really all that, you know. <laughs> but they're, they're just incredible beings. But the same, you know, the, the truth is, is that there are many, many incredible beings here on the planet Earth, and I would say many of them are sitting right here in this sanctuary today. 
And what Ram Dass says in this book is that service is a reflex, like it's natural to serve, very similar to the, to the story that Hugh read, that it's, um, that it's, it's, I hear you laughing, and I know what you're laughing at, that ev everything is, is, is natural, like, you know, I like your hat, or let me move my feet out of the way so you can get to your aisle. Everything serves, service is a reflex, everything serves, service expresses a high and holy purpose. Pun intended, okay. <laughs> I can't control myself sometimes, you know? I just gotta put that in there, okay. All right. So, if there's any part of your life that's not working, if you're feeling downtrodden, if you're feeling distressed, if you're feeling worried, if you're feeling anxious, it feels antithetical to say that maybe service will help, but maybe service will help, extending ourselves into service. Because I believe that service is a natural function of our way of being here, and that service somehow scratches an itch that nothing else can get to. Anybody else have an itch? Like, not right now, but <laughs> like in the middle of your back that you can't get to, right? Service is like scratching an itch that nothing else will fix, nothing else will solve, okay? So our purpose today, our purpose today is to cultivate a new view of service. It's to expand in joy. <laughs> That's my universal symbol of joy. That's Carmen Miranda, you know, Brazilian singer. Please, God, don't let me burst into song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I can't sing Portuguese, so don't let me. <laughs> okay. And then also to reveal that which is great within us. It's kind of like what Bill was talking about, you know? Who's willing to take a risk and take a new path? Who's willing to reveal what is great within you? Who's, who is willing to reveal what is great within you? Raise your hand if you're willing to reveal what is great within you. Yes, hallelujah, amen. Okay. Oh, Lord, the preacher in me is getting out of control. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, the thing is, though, is that when we look at service, you know, I, I, I know, I know I have been to churches, and I, probably some of you have been where... Um, the idea of you have to serve causes a bit of a clinch, right? A bit of a clinch, like I'm not enough. I'm not able to do enough. And so some of us may have old barriers, old past barriers that we carry with us to serving. Scarcity of time and other resources. That's my favorite one, is that I don't have enough time to do that. Where in truth, I have found recently that expanding in service actually has this odd paradoxical effect on time. The more I serve, the more time I seem to have, and the richer my time is when I serve, right? Another barrier to service is that I'm not important, or I'm not needed, or I don't have anything that anybody would want. And again, it's that thing of when we serve from an open heart, when we serve from a place of purity, then we realize the importance of what we do and we also can see the importance of other people that are serving with us, or the people that we serve. So again, it's sort of that, that paradoxical thing of feeling like I'm not important, but serve anyway, and then the importance, the, the value of who we are starts to, starts to blossom and flourish within us. My service won't make a difference. Many of you perhaps have heard on the news or social media or whatever that the world is in trouble, that this is a troubled place and there's a lot to do and something must be done now. Yeah. Something must be done now. And it often looks like small acts of service and small acts of commitment to the greater good and small acts of joy and small acts of bringing love to the planet. I think that's what needs to be done. And we get to be part of that in tiny, tiny ways. And I'm going to talk today about how tiny service can be and still be effective. <laughs> oh. Change, so today we're, we're here to challenge false beliefs and receive spiritual truth, okay? All right. The truth is, is that your mere presence matters. Your presence matters. Your presence matters here. Your presence matters in the world. Let me reveal to you Exhibit A. <laughs> Does that look familiar? <laughs> The picture might be kind of small, but um, you can also have the life-size version there. So, you know, the, the, uh, we call this the flat choir, right? And the flat choir was born during the pandemic when we had no bodies in the seats. We had nobody, nobody in church because we weren't allowed to. And some very, very kind leaders 
decided that in order to make it a more pleasant experience for those that needed to come and produce the service, and also for those who are watching on the live stream, that we would put in some influential teachers, teachers that have influenced us over the years. <laughs> it's funny, because the flat choir, even being made out of cardboard, made a difference. Not only a difference in that they lifted our spirits, but also there was a bit of controversy around the flat choir. <laughs> I won't go into it, but there were certain objections to certain people in the flat choir. <laughs> I will share with you that the biggest controversy is Spartacus's sword. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. Some people don't like Spartacus's sword. Some of them see it as the sword of truth. Some see it, see it as um, a, a hanger for, that's a mask on his sword in the picture. Right now we've got the Ukraine flag on it. Someone else wanted to turn it into a plowshare. That's kind of spiritual, right? Turn your swords into plowshares, right? From the Bible. I think, and <laughs> yes, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then, you know, during, during uh, Pride Month, we put, a, we put a pride flag on it, so it, it serves a purpose, but it was really interesting to watch what people, what projections people would put onto the flat choir. So the flat choir, even though they're not animate, right, they mattered. They mattered so that people would complain about them. <laughs> They mattered that others would celebrate them. They mattered. It was awesome. And verily I say unto you, this is from the Bible, the Bible according to Bonnie, yet not one member of the flat choir will fall to the ground outside of God's care, and even the very hairs on y'all's legs are numbered. <laughs> so don't be afraid. You are worth much more than a cardboard mystic. Are you raising your hands because you haven't shaved your legs lately, Gia? Is that the... <laughs> oh, okay, good to know. Okay, because... Uh... <laughs> Let's not overshare, Bon, but, you know, this is the reason I wear pants a lot, so... <laughs> anyway, let me read that verse again. Yet not one member of the flat choir will fall to the ground outside of God's care, and even the very hairs on y'all's legs... <laughs> the very hairs on y'all's legs are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth much more than a cardboard mystic. Yes, yes. Amen and hallelujah. So what I'm saying here, people, brothers and sisters, is that your presence matters. Did you see all those little kids up on the stage here this morning? Did their presence matter? Absolutely. And they were just sitting there, just sitting there being themselves, but somehow they lifted our hearts because they were here. And the same thing, this is, a, this is another picture of children. I'm not going to keep it on very long because of, you know, rights and all that stuff. Children and, a, and my bunny when she was still tiny. She's about, I don't know, a lot bigger now. But anyway, your presence matters. Sitting in these seats, your presence matters. You serve something because you exist. And when you are here, you serve this spiritual soup that is here being created in this bowl of a sanctuary. You may not know it, you may not feel it, but it's true. Your presence matters. Can you just say after me, my presence matters? My presence matters. Can you turn to somebody and say, your presence matters? Your presence matters. Your presence matters. <laughs> now, you know my favorite one, my favorite one. Think of someone you don't like, don't say the name. <laughs> Think of someone you don't like, don't say the name, and say, Stinky's presence matters. Stinky. Oh, now, I need a little more enthusiasm with that. I need a bigger Stinky, okay? Stinky's stinky. presence matters. Thank you very much. Okay, so Stinky is here to teach us how to be patient and loving and how to meet hatred, resistance, judgment with great compassion. That's why Stinky is here, okay? Karen. <laughs> okay, good to know. All righty. So to, and so to find this place on your own, you know, when you're, when you're reviewing this message in your, in your spare time, there are some things you can ask yourself. Like, even as you're going about your day, who or what am I serving now? Do you know that when, we're, when you're like, I don't know, in the grocery store, that's my favorite ashram in the world, when we're in the grocery store, we can be of service? Like that reading that Hugh did? No, you go first. You go first. Even if there's a collision of carts, getting out of the way with kindness, not scowling and rolling, at your, rolling your eyes like I used to do at the people who, get, who got in my way because I needed to get to the cat food before they did, you know? <laughs> Just, just, what am I serving now? And committing to living from that place of service in all of the small tasks that we do. The other thing is, how am I serving? In what way am I serving? 
what, in what may, way am I serving? This is a how and a what, but yesterday I served in a very simple way. I have a fish up there because my husband and I have a koi pond with fish, goldfish and koi. And sometimes, usually when I'm procrastinating, I decide that I'm gonna take a fish, the fish for a walk. Now, that might seem odd. <laughs> I don't put a little harness or leash on them, but they're, they're very hungry all the time. It's in the evening, they want food. So let's say this is the koi pond and I'll just walk like this and the fish will follow me. <laughs> and then I'll go like this and the fish will follow me. And does that matter? I think it does. <laughs> it brings me joy. It gives the fish something to do. It gives them something to look forward to. And here I am telling all of you about taking the fish for a walk so that you can take your own fish for a walk. <laughs> or the equivalent of that. Whatever that is, just small, simple acts that bring you joy enhance the joy of the cosmos. And that, to me, is the most important thing, is that we bring joy to the cosmos, because that is its natural state. Everything is moving towards greater joy. We just can't always see it, but we can be part of the change that we wish to see in the world. <laughs> and all of this service, by just being, by doing small, simple, joyous things, leads to what I would call intentional service, okay? So intentional service is actually taking on a service role, but doing it with great love and great compassion. That's my name tag from the last time I went to India. And I just, you know, I just slapped it on. I just thought it was a name tag. But later on, I found out that the volunteers that created the name tags read every single person's bio. There were about 60 of us. And then they would, they put a piece of burlap and they had um, cloth spun at the Gandhi ashram. And then they wrote our name in this beautiful calligraphy. And they read our bios. And as they wrote our name, they meditated and prayed on each of our names. Yeah. Now, I don't want to say that that's just limited to India. Sometimes people have this illusion like India is this holy place and it's better than here. <laughs> it's not. It's not. This is happening here, too, in this church. We have a practitioner that when he used to um, serve food, we would have dinners and whatnot, he would chop vegetables and he would say a prayer, with a blessing with every vegetable that he chopped, every cut that he made. I've had so many people, so many people, I think one of them is Lonnie, our board president, who spoke earlier today, said that when they come into, the first time she came to the church, it was a greeter who wanted her to stay. Who, 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 who wanted her to stay. <laughs> You're not going here. No, that came out wrong. Who caused her to, to feel welcome and caused her to feel like she wanted to be here. The smile of a greeter. The smile of a greeter, perhaps the hug of a greeter. There's so much quiet service going on behind the scenes now, and each of those small acts, done mindfully and done intentionally, matters as much as somebody reading my bio and writing a name tag with me, praying for me. The practitioners do so much. Our tech team does so much. You know, even the, even the snafus happen. <clears throat> I mentioned this last week, but I, I have to talk about it again because the, the fruition of it was so beautiful. Uh, as some of you may know, that uh, we... <laughs> the tech team is going to, you know, come after me after this, but on Easter Sunday, we didn't have sound because there was a, a snafu. There was a, um, a we, we had sound in the sanctuary, but it didn't go out on the live stream, so it wasn't recorded. And there was a, a frayed cable, and there was nothing they could have done about it. And when we talked about it afterwards, they were so apologetic because it was Easter Sunday, and that's a big Sunday, man, and you've got to get people invested in Easter Sunday, and a lot of people are looking forward to it. And, and myself and the other person I was with were just like, you know, there's going to be a blessing in this. We don't have to get all worked up about this. There's going to be a blessing in this. There's going to be an opportunity for service and blessing. And wouldn't you know it, we decided to do an Easter reboot because so many people were upset. And the people who came to the Easter reboot, it wasn't a big crowd, but it was a great crowd. It was a great crowd. And I learned so much from the people that were on that call. We just did a Zoom call. And I'm, I'm assuming that others learned from each other. You know, so there's a blessing in everything. And the intention of saying the blessing that is in everything, everything serves everything, is so powerful. And it helps us, again, scratch that itch of something that feels like it's missing. It feels, it, it feels good. It feels joyful. We get to do that through intentional service. So intentional service enhances our experience, and it also enhances the experience of others in unseen, mystical, marvelous ways. <laughs> it helps us fall in love, fall in love with life. Last week, I spoke about <clears throat> doing a wedding, and uh, actually, the, the person whose niece I married is here today. And after the, after the wedding, she asked me, why are your weddings so good? And I said, because I fall in love with the couple in front of me. 
fall in love with the couple in front of me <laughs> and, and, and then have one eye on the rest of the group, but my focus is to make this a special day for that couple. And, you know, the thing is, is that knowing that about the couple, how I'm falling in love with, with them, we can, we can all know that we can fall in love with something at any moment. You can fall in love with the person sitting next to you. I love you. Say that to somebody. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. <laughs> fall in love with the person before you. Even if you don't like them, fall in love with the person before you. <laughs> Chris, I don't think I saw, heard you say I love you. You did. Okay, good to know. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be here like the I love you police. Did you say it? Did you say it? Did you say it? <laughs> right? So we fall in love. And the thing is, too, is that you don't really have to go around, you know, blurting out I love you to everybody that you see on the street or the grocery store or at Starbucks. I love you! You know? <laughs> they might lock you up. But <clears throat> it can be invisible. Just affirming the love of being for all beings everywhere as much as we possibly can remember to do it. Isn't that great to replace our script about how the world is going to hell in a handbasket by just saying, I love you, to something or someone? Even Stinky. Thank you for that, Jana. Yes. I love Stinky. Everybody, I love Stinky. Good job. Y'all, I got to tell you, this is off script totally, but sometimes, you know, I look at other churches. <laughs> you know, I've been here a long time. Maybe they're getting sick of me. I don't think any other church would have me at this point. <laughs> you think I could get another church to yell out, I love Stinky? I don't think so. So I guess I'm here for a while. So there you go. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So to find joy in service again, to find the joy, the service, when service becomes joy, to find that again for yourselves. Something that you can do is to, when you're, when you're in the middle of something, whether it's you're intentionally, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're like doing a service job or whether you're doing something, some mundane task like folding the laundry, you can say, how can I up-level my intention to serve? Can you fold the laundry with love? Can you load the dishwasher with love? Can you greet people at the door with love? Can you be like sweet Lisa and the other hospitality volunteers serving the cookies and, can, and, and uh, fruit, to Nick with his fruit, to serve all of that with love? Can you just have every intention be an action of love? How can I up-level my intention to serve? And it's gonna be different for everybody here. And then the other one is to do the small acts of great love. That's quoting Mother Teresa. We can't do everything, but we can do small acts of great love or small acts with great love, right? Then there's the mystical component, my favorite thing. <laughs> the mystical component of, of service. <clears throat> this is a picture, <clears throat> excuse me, of a Mobius strip. And I, I think, so I talk about it a lot, probably you are, many of you are familiar with what a Mobius strip is, but it's like a, you know, it's like a, a, if you take a strip of paper and you twist it and then put the ends together, it makes kind of like a figure eight, but there's a, there's a, um, a the inside becomes the outside, and the outside becomes the inside. It's very much a representation, a physical representation of a book, of a verse from the Gospel of Thomas that I always quote or misquote, where he says, when the inner becomes the outer, when the outer become, and the outer becomes the inner, when the above becomes the below, and the beloved becomes the above, when a man becomes a woman and a woman becomes a man, when all opposites reconcile, that is the kingdom of heaven. That is Rumi's field. That is the place beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There's a field, I'll meet you there. And when the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. The world is joyful. The world is filled with hope. The world is filled with the truth of the ongoing mystical divine that lives and moves and has its perfect being in each of us all the time. So the mystical component, component of service is this. You may have heard the expression, you can't outgive God meaning that God gives us everything, everything. The truth is, is that you can't outserve God either because God has already served us in so many ways. God has given us 
feet so that we can walk. God has given us a digestive system so that we can digest our food. God has given us fruits and vegetables and all kinds of growing things. God has given us, serves us with the animal kingdom. God serves us with relationships. God serves us with church and community. God, all of these things that God has created, oh, God serves us so much with science. Oh my goodness, look at how science is going these days. A little scary sometimes, but still, look at how science is going. God serves us by providing the, 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 the brains and the intelligence that can figure out medical mysteries. God, you cannot outserve God. But the thing is, is that the universe is this dynamic flow of service, and when we serve, we are going with the flow. Abraham Hicks says, you know, often when we're trying to manifest something in our lives, it's like we're swimming upstream. We're trying to push something. We're trying to make something happen and pushing upstream whereas she and others recommend that we just go with the flow. Service is a way of going with the flow. And again, it doesn't have to be huge service. It is, it is giving, giving of yourself from where you are and what intentionally and what sacred beingness wants to move through you. You know, one of my teachers in the past, Dr. Edward Villiun, a science of mind minister and <clears throat> former spiritual leader of this denomination, when he would talk about tithing, he would say, tithing is giving money, he would say, it's, it's not about how much you give, it's the way in which you give it. Same thing with service. It's not about how much you serve, how many service hours you log, it's the way in which you serve, the intention with which you serve. Are you loving yourself and are you loving others as you're serving? Are you serving from a place of joy? Are you serving from a place of exuberance? Are you serving from a place that knows that this is, this is, the, this is creation? This is being in the flow with God, okay? More about this mystical component is that when we are going with the flow, when we are serving from that mystical place, we are aligning with the divine energy that is in everything, and there's nothing better than that. That's why we sing that song, I am remembering who I am. It realigns us with the divine. And then, here's the, here's the Mobius strip part. When server and served are one, that makes joy. The thing about a Mobius strip is that sometimes when you're tracing it with your fingers, sometimes you're on the inside and sometimes you're on the outside and pretty soon the inside becomes the outside and the outside becomes the inside. And when we serve, server and served become one. Have you ever experienced that? Like when you serve and you think you're the one who's giving but really you receive so much more than you gave? happens to me all the time, and I suspect that it happens to a lot of us. But just to be mindful of that, to notice that, to notice what a gift service is, perhaps to the person that you're serving, but so much more to the person who is doing the serving. It's just a beautiful, magnificent thing. It's a mystical Mobius experience. That's what it is. <laughs> Remember that, a mystical Mobius experience. Stinky, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so just a quick recap. Mm. Your presence serves. Your presence matters. Your presence here matters. I am delighted to see all of you here today. You, you have lifted me up today just by seeing you, and I, hope, I, I trust that you're lifting each other up just by your presence. Just turn to somebody and say, you lift me up, stinky. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you do know that I also use stinky as a term of endearment, right? I call a lot of my, my animals and dear ones stinky. I call myself stinky a lot too, so that was, not, <laughs> that was not intended to offend, okay? All right. Conscious service, actually serving with intention, changes our experience, and it helps us become that which we wish to be in the world. It helps us become more loving, the, the presence of love, really. And then service aligns us with the divine mystery, with that Mobius strip of mystery that just, that place where giver and receiver become one, which is such a beautiful place to abide. That's when we really know that we are in the, in the realm of heaven, as that, as that verse from the Gospel of Thomas says, when the inner becomes the outer, and the outer becomes the inner, when the inside, when the upper becomes the lower, and the lower becomes the upper, when the server becomes the served, and the served becomes the server, then we enter the kingdom of heaven. Rumi's field, if you prefer, okay? All of this, and so much more, so much more that cannot be described, all of this brings us joy. That's when service becomes joy. <laughs> I'm closing with a, with a picture of it. Is that a dolphin or a porpoise? I couldn't tell. I don't know. 
Somebody's going to tell me if I got the wrong animal there, but anyway, <laughs> let's just call it a dolphin. I, I'm ending with this picture of this, of this dolphin. Um, and mm, one more thing to remember. You know, as we serve, we align with whatever it is you call God, the universe, the cosmos, the grace of being, the love, the joy. And as you serve, here's a quote from Anthony DeMello to help us remember what's really happening. Imagine God looking at you and smiling. Namaste, my fellow brothers and sisters in service, and so it is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I love you, Stinky. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's turn within and just trust to know this beautiful flow of energy that is moving in this sanctuary. Uh, this great involution, evolution of the divine that is bubbling and streaming and just moving through us with such grace and such goodness. As we open our hearts to it, we know it has always been there. And right now, we just enter into its presence and, and recognize again, remember our oneness with it, our unification with it. This energy that is love, that is peace, that is power, that is happiness, that is service, that serves beyond our understanding of service, that allows us to get out of the way and let something greater serve through us so that our lives are blessed and blissful and joyful. And so today I speak my word for every single person here today, trusting and knowing that we are filled with this capacity to serve simply because we exist. And now we are conscious of it. And so we can take that consciousness, we can take that awareness, we can take it and we can share it. We anticipate opportunities to serve. We serve today simply by being here. And we serve in our lives, in our lives in this sanctuary, but also in our lives beyond this sanctuary knowing that everything we do, whether it's driving or shopping or folding laundry or emptying the dishwasher or, or cooking or caring for our children, everything is an act of service. Particularly when we are intentional about it, it makes it so much deeper and so much better. And so I hold forth the knowing of that and consciousness for each of us here today and know that our lives explode in joy, explode in happiness, explode in peace, and expand into the grace that we already are. I'm just so grateful. So grateful for this power and this presence. So grateful for this knowing of the divine love that lives and moves and has its perfect being through us. I'm grateful for the transformation that occurs here and beyond here in each of us. So grateful for everyone that said yes to service today, to church today, whether you're online, whether you're in person, whether you're watching later. Just so grateful for everyone who's lending their consciousness to this gathering. And as always, I bless all paths to God. I bless this one for its wisdom. I bless synagogues, temples, churches, mosques, ashrams, gurdwaras. I bless fundamentalists, atheists, agnostics. I bless everyone, trusting that the blessing is inherent in everyone. And so with a heart that is so filled with blessedness, I say thank you, spirit. Thank you, love. And I release these words into the divine mystery. And together we say, and so it is. Namaste. Hi, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. And I love when you mentioned when I first came to the church. Um, you know, I walked through those doors and there was something very palatable that felt loving. And, you know, it made me want to stay. And I love church and I'd always been in church, but I found a place where we could have fun and where our focus was joy. I mean, really? Joy? <laughs> Um, love, kindness, and, you know, it just grew. And the gift that you gave yourself today by coming, it's like, it, I'm just so happy for you because it changed my life. I made wonderful friends. I can look out and see so many. And I just know that you have so much more to explore and love and joy and kindness is just waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So this morning as we prepare our offering, which is a deed of service, um, I just invite you to be in that place of joy and fun and kindness and love. And you really are in church. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you. I invite you to place your offering over your heart and repeat after me. 
We trust in spirit. We trust in spirit. Love is a giver and receiver of all that we are. Love is the giver and receiver of all that we are. We offer this gift. We offer this gift. It is an outer expression of our inner abundance and compassion. It is an outer expression of our inner abundance and compassion. Our gifts bless many. Our gifts bless many. And return to us multiplied in miraculous ways. Our gifts multiplied in miraculous ways. So that we may give again. So that we may give again. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Lonnie. A feast. A feast. Love is the ruler of my heart. Peace is the spirit of my soul. Joy bring me freedom like a bird. And truth is the power of my word. Fruit so sweet to the taste and a rose in bloom. I'm a tree in the backyard for a sunset view Brings a tear and a smile, all the colors we can see Life is just living itself through you and me And it's got to be Love is the ruler of my heart Peace is a spirit of my soul freedom like a bird truth is the power of my word cause there's a dream in everyone from the acorn to the oak a deep expression of wonder and hope kindness is never in vain it's always been so cause God's love is all the same in one and all it's got to show love is the ruler of my heart peace is a spirit of my soul cause joy bring me freedom oh, like a bird truth is the power of my word bring it up and the light we are the light let's show some quick announcements and uh, let's see so um, anything that I t that I'm talking about is going to be on the website www.venturacsl.org or there's a desk out there and you can sign up for our weekly newsletter which has everything you need to know in it about everything no just about the church okay so we've got some ambassadors here today Susan and Bill they are wearing um, teal stoles and they would be happy to answer any questions that you have about the church whether you're new or whether you're not this is our last day for Gourmets for God bidding. So get on out there. Bidding ends at uh, noon. So uh, if you want to wanna try for a party, then go, go for it, okay? I'm going to have uh, Brother David come up here and tell us about something that's coming up. Hey. Hi. 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 
So uh, next Saturday at 10 o'clock, we're going to be celebrating Vesak, which is the celebration of the Buddha's birth, awakening, and final passing. And the theme is the gate to the deathless is open. Nice. And this refers to when the Buddha decided that he was going to teach because what he had to say was so deep and so profound, he was a little concerned that nobody would understand. <laughs> but then he realized there were people with comparatively little dust in their eyes who could hear and learn and attain the same awakening as he did. So, you are invited to come through the gates to the deathless and perfect awakening, Saturday at 10. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, David. Oh, awesome, thank you so much. There's another class coming up. It's a, a class in some, similar to what I was talking about today. It's Sacred Service, and Bernie Austin and Lita Martin, who are a dynamic duo, are teaching that. That's four Wednesday evenings, 6.30 to 8. I'm also going to be participating in that, coming and going, and um, lending uh, experience to, to the gathering. And we really hope a lot of people come. It's um, an opportunity to, to just commit and make friends and to also just really learn how your own life can be enhanced through service in the ways that I spoke about, but also in, in other deep ways. And so um, go ahead and sign up for that if you like at uh, on the website or Eventbrite. You'll see it in the newsletter. Or you can get more information at that desk out there. We're, we're still doing um, lots of outreach opportunities. Uh, we are doing a collection for Mercy House, new underwear and socks, and um, that's going to be over pretty soon, so if you got some undies and socks to bring in, please do so. Um, family to family, we serve lunch to unhoused folks on the first Mondays. Lift Up Your Voice is a project that rehomes people, and we, also, we always need small furniture, smaller kitchen items, and working bicycles. We also partner with Step Up Ventura and do various projects for them, so um, we're, we'll keep you posted about that. Uh, there's all kinds of information, again, on the desk out there. Choir rehearsal today starts at noon, so the choir can bid on Gourmets for God. So um, if you'd like to join the choir, everybody's welcome. So go on downstairs into Martha's Hall, which is down some steps, and we'll show you how to get there. And um, sing your little hearts out with the choir. Also after service, there's hospitality, there's great food, there's fruit served by Nick, there's um, a bookstore, there's also a giveaway table, there's artwork, there's colored t-shirts, all kinds of great stuff. One of the best things you can do after the service is to get a prayer with a practitioner. Just come on down front. The practitioners are wearing white stoles, and they'll pray for whatever, whatever you want prayer for. And I did want to make a quick announcement. It, it was sort of a last-minute thing. Um, many of you have heard me talk about Nipun Mehta, who is the, the gentleman that um, founded Service Space, which is an organization that I'm deeply involved in. They're, they're the ones I go to India with. And uh, Nipun is coming to speak on May 21st. So uh, save the date for that. It's going to be remarkable. So. I think that's all I got. So let us go ahead and we will do a prayer and then head on out. Thank you. Okay. So again, I just give thanks for this gathering. I give thanks, just thank you so much for joining us today, for walking through those doors and, and choosing church. I thank the God presence that drew us all together to create this unique gathering of souls, spirits, each of us with different perspectives, each of, us, each of us looking at the world through different lenses, but somehow coming together in community to bless one another in seen and unseen ways. I give thanks for unseen service, for everything that has happened today, whether it's seen or unseen. And I give thanks again for this day, for this beautiful, beautiful day, and for all of the wisdom and all of the gifts and all of the love that God gives us always. And so with a heart so filled with gratitude, knowing that we go our separate ways, but that our lives are blessed, I release these words into the divine mystery, and together we say, and so it is.